for joining us in another episode of BBC Kids Bible Time. We are so happy to have you this week. All right, we're going to get ready to sing some songs. So stand up and get ready to sing out loud, okay? Ready? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Now, if you are with multiple people, maybe even your mom and your dad, maybe you guys can sing it together and one of you says, praise ye the Lord, and the other person says, hallelujah, okay? Let's see who could be louder, okay? Ready? You ready, Cyrus? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Sing loud. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Good job, Phoebe. All right, we're going to go to our next song. But for this one, you need to have your Bible. So go get it really fast. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Run and get it. Don't fall. Run and get your Bible. Get ready to sing this with me, okay? You ready? You ready, Chris? Okay. Get the new look from the old book. Get the new look from the Bible. Get the new look from the old book. Get the new look from God's word. The inward look, the outward look. Stand up, the upward look from the old, old book. Get the new look from the old book. Get the new look from God's word. All right, we're going to try it one more time. Remember, when we say the upward look, you need to stand up and then raise your Bible up, okay? When we say uh, the old book, the Bible, any of those, remember, raise your Bible up, okay? You ready, Penny? Let's go. Get the new look from the old book. Get the new look from the Bible. Get the new look from the old book. Get the new look from God's word. The inward look, the outward look. Stand up the upward look from the old, old book. Get the new look from the old book. Get the new look from God's word. Good job, Nikki. Okay, let's do our next one so you guys can go have a seat. and get ready to sing this one very nicely and pretty, okay? We're going to sing a few more verses with it as well. Okay, ready? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And then we're going to sing the next one. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Okay? Singing all together. Ready? Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. And the last verse, try to sing it loudly, ready? The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Good job. Okay, now have your listening ears ready for Miss Kaylee to do our lesson. 
Great job singing today, everyone. Jeremiah, I hope that you and Tanasha were able to sing hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord, and take turns singing that song. Before we get started on our new lesson for this week, let's go ahead and review the questions from last week. Congratulations, Michaela, for being the first person to send in your answers and winning that prize. All right, question number one. What does the name Onesimus mean? In our story from last week and the week before, we have been learning about this servant named Onesimus, and his name had an important meaning. What does his name mean? That's right, his name means profitable and useful. And we learned that in the beginning of our story, he was neither profitable nor useful. But towards the end, he did become very profitable and useful to finally men. Question number two. Who did Paul write a letter to? Onesimus ended up in jail in our story last week, and he met the Apostle Paul. And as he was talking to Paul, Paul said that he would write a letter to somebody. Who did Paul write that letter to? That's right, Timmy. Paul wrote the letter to Philemon. And question number three, who paid for the sins of Onesimus? If you'll remember, after Paul talked to, or after Onesimus talked to Paul, Onesimus realized that he was a sinner, and he prayed to somebody to ask for forgiveness of his sins. Caro, who paid for the sins of Onesimus? That's right, Jesus Christ is the one who paid for the sins of Onesimus and for the sins of me and for you. Well, this week, we are going to learn about a new person in the Bible. Before we get started with our new lesson, let's go ahead and say a word of prayer. Remember, we need to fold our hands, bow our heads, and close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for giving us life and just allowing us to meet together or to watch the, to watch the BBC Kids Time, Lord. Lord, I just pray for me as I'm teaching this new story, Lord. I pray for each one of the boys and girls listening in. I pray that they would listen closely and intently, and they, they would send in their answers, Lord, and that not only would they send in their answers, but they would remember what was taught, and that they would learn something from it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. This week, our story is about a man in the Bible named Naaman and his little servant girl. The story is mainly about this little girl, and we can find her story and Naaman's story in the book of 2 Kings in the Old Testament of the Bible. We don't even know this little girl's name. Of course, everyone has a name. My name is Miss Kaylee. Your name might be Timmy. But this little girl, we don't know what her name was. The Bible doesn't tell us. But for our story, let's call her Ada. There were a lot of little girls in Israel named Ada. Her family worshipped the one true God. Ada loved God with all of her heart. Then, one day, a great sadness came into her life. Enemy soldiers marched through their land. Knock, knock, knock. Open this door. In the name of the king of Syria, open the door. Knock, knock, knock. If no one came to the door, the soldiers broke it down. The enemy soldiers marched right into her house. Ada was carried out of her home and away from her family. Like many women and children, she was taken into a land where she had, that she had never seen before. There, she was sold as a slave. She was very frightened or very scared. One day, she was purchased to be the personal maid for the wife of the general of the Syrian army. This man's name was General Naaman, or just Naaman. He was a very important man in the land of Syria. He was a very good friend of the king. Mrs. Naaman was a very important woman. Ada helped her dress for parties. She helped her fix her hair. And she kept Mrs. Naaman's room in order. 
General and Mrs. Neiman lived in a very fine home. Ada had never seen such a beautiful place. She looked around at all the beauty and thought, how happy these people must be to live in a place like this. But guess what, Caro? She was not there very long before she knew that the general and Mrs. Naaman were not happy. Many times she found Mrs. Naaman crying. Is there anything I can do? She asked. No, there is nothing you can do. There is nothing anyone can do. Ada was puzzled. She was confused. What could be the matter? Why was everyone so sad? Naaman and his wife were kind to their young maid, and she learned to love them. Of course, she missed her home and her family. She thought about them all the time. She thought about the Lord God, too, and prayed to him often. Naaman and Mrs. Naaman did not pray to God. They worshipped idols of wood and stone. Then guess what, Michaela? One day, the young maid learned the reason why they were unhappy. It was entirely by accident. Naaman had never intended that she should see the white spots on his arm. He had a disease. This disease was called leprosy. That means that he would never be well again and that he would die a terrible death. No wonder there was sadness in their home. Ada thought and thought about it. She prayed about it too. If only she could do something to help. Suddenly, she had an idea. Ada remembered Elisha, the man of God, back in her home country. The Lord had used him to do some wonderful miracles. If Naaman went to Elisha, he could be cured of his leprosy. Ada felt sure of that. She would tell Mrs. Naaman about her God and about Elijah. Then a terrifying thought popped into her head. Wait a minute, Ada. You are only a slave girl. These are important people. If you want to worship God, that is fine. But you cannot expect them to pay attention to you. You had better just keep still or be quiet about God. Ada knew that thought was from Satan. She simply prayed in her heart, Dear Lord, do give me the courage to tell them about you. The next time that she saw tears in Mrs. Naaman's eyes, Ada whispered, I know what's the matter. I saw the spots of leprosy on the general. Naaman's wife began to sob. She began to cry very hard. Oh, Ada, soon everyone will know. And you know what that means? The general will have to leave home and live where only lepers live, outside of the city. He will have to stay there until he dies. Leprosy is a terrible disease. It starts with just a tiny spot, but you see how it has grown and soon it will cover his whole body. Mrs. Naaman cried harder than ever. Ada prayed a quick silent prayer to God in heaven. Then she said, I wish the general would go down to my country. There is a man of God down there who could heal him of his leprosy. Ada, did you ever hear of anyone being healed of leprosy? Mrs. Naaman questioned Ada. She did not believe Ada. But guess what, Carl? This is what Ada said. She said, well, no, replied the maid. But God caused this prophet to bring a dead boy back to life. So God could surely help him to heal leprosy. He worships the true God the God who made heaven and earth. Naaman's wife was thinking very seriously. It is worth a try, she said. I will speak to my husband about it. Boys and girls, this week's pride wor prize word is decide. 
just like the little servant girl had to decide whether or not to tell Mrs. Naaman about the one true God, sometimes we have to decide whether we are going to do right or wrong. We have to decide whether we are going to keep what we know about God quiet into ourselves, or will we decide to go out and tell others about him? So what is the prize word, Jeremiah? That's right, our prize word is decide. Our questions for this week are question number one. Who was the servant girl sold to? You have to think all the way back to the beginning of our story for today. But who was the servant girl sold to? Question number two. Who did the servant girl worship? We learned that who the servant girl was sold to worshipped wood and stone. They worshipped idols of wood and stone. But who did the servant girl worship? And question number three, what disease did the important man have? This important man in our story had this disease that made spots all over his body. What disease did this man have? All right, make sure you email in your answers to bbclmockkids at gmail.com and be the first person to send in your answers to win our prize for this week. Okay, boys and girls, I want you to get ready for Miss Pam to come and lead us in our new memory verse for this week. Great job listening to our lesson today, everyone. We're going to get ready to do our memory verse for this week, but first we're going to review our memory verse from the last two weeks because we actually had it for two weeks. All right, Isaiah 43, 1, say it all together, ready? Isaiah 43, 1, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by name, thou art mine, Isaiah 43, 1. All right, I think we do a little better than that, so let's say it one more time. You ready, Chris? Let's go, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by name. Thou art mine. Isaiah 43, 1. Great job, Penny. Okay, we're going to do our new verse for today. It's found in Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, 15. 15. Okay, we're going to say it all together really loudly. You ready, Cyrus? Let's go. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, 15. Let's try it two more times. Okay, Phoebe? Ready? Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, 15. And one last time. You guys got to really get this verse down for something super special that I'm going to tell you about later, okay? after this. So we're going to say it all together really loudly. Everyone's saying it super loudly. Okay. You ready, Nikki? Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, 15. Good job. Make sure you keep that verse in mind for something super special, like I told you. Now, for the challenge this week, it's going to be really easy, okay? But it also has to do with you memorizing your verse. So make sure part of the challenge is you have to know your verse super, super well, okay? No helps. You have to know it really, really well, okay? You should be able to say it as fast as you can without looking without any helps, okay? So... That's the first part of this challenge. You have to know your verse, okay? And be able to say it without any helps. 
The next part is so easy, okay? You have to have your parents watch the end of this video because I have a special message for them, okay? So you do your part for the challenge, memorize your verse and quote your verse, be able to say it really well, and then they have to do their part, okay? So they, you have to be like, mom, dad, please, this is part of the challenge. And it's so easy to give you your 700 points, okay? So remember your challenge, memorize your verse, know it very, very well. And part two of this, make sure you have your parents watch the end of this video. So watch all the way till it stops playing, okay? Because there's, I have a special message for them, okay? You guys have a wonderful week. Don't forget, this is a very important challenge, okay? It's kind of a surprise it's gonna happen, okay? All right, you guys have a good week. Have a good day today, see you later. Hey parents, don't forget I have an important message for you at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Hello parents, thank you so much for helping your children complete the challenge for this week. So their challenge was two parts. First, they had to memorize and quote to you Mark 16, 15. And then you, they had to make sure you watched the end of the video. So say, thank you so much for helping them complete that. All right, so the reason why I wanted you guys to watch the end is because I have a special message for you. We want to hear from you, okay? So we have something really special planned that involves them quoting their verse, okay? What we want you to do is make sure that they all uh, uh, memorize it and quote it to you. They can say it without any helps. And then what you're gonna do is record them saying their verse to you, okay? If they're younger and they do need a little bit of help, you can say it with them or they can kind of repeat after you. That's, a, that's okay, but if we could try to get everyone to say it without helps, that would be wonderful because we wanna make a video, a full video of every person, every child that listens and watches. We want them to show up on our screen in the next few videos, okay? So if you can help us out. So our challenge for you is make sure your kid knows the verse, they quote it, memorize it, and quote it to you without any help so you know they're ready. And then you're gonna record them. If you have multiple children, record each of them saying it separately, record all of them together, whatever you prefer. But you're gonna record them saying the verse, Mark 16, 15, and then you email it to me, okay? You email it to us, BBC, the same email that you use for their answers, bbcelmontkids at gmail.com, okay? Go ahead. So again, to recap, just record your child or children saying Mark 16, 15 and send that in. And then you can just send it to BBC Elmont Kids. We're going to make a really long video and kind of surprise pastor with this of all the children that have been watching and taking part in BBC Kids. All right. Thank you again so much for allowing your children to be part of this and for being faithful and letting them watch it every week. All right, you have a great day.